Good afternoon, dear colleagues. We are launching our panel discussion about the new formats of the public servants professional development national and international context. I would like to apologize for starting late due to the limited access to this campus. We wanted uh, everyone who wanted to be with us to make it. My name is Alexei Komisarov, and today I'll be moderating our discussion. In May of 2018, the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has signed uh, so-called May decrees, presidential decrees, where he identified a goal of uh, making breakthrough technological and social development of Russia. But to be able to have a breakthrough, you, you need to change. You need to change people, first of all, who are supposed to implement this breakthrough. In, in the last year's forum, we have been speaking that in this case, there are only two solutions. Either you change people and uh, look for new uh, public officers or teach existing ones, but to replace them is not an easy task in itself. And even if you uh, replace them, still you have to teach these people and teach them even more extensively. So the the whole um, challenge of uh, of teaching public employees, um, training them, uh, is very challenging. Um, when we speak about the world, uh, and people studied and were getting one education for life, it does not work anymore. Now we're saying about lifelong learning because life is changing rapidly around us. Is there any specifics to uh, training public employees? And, and who, how, and should teach what to, um, to public employees? and who will be evaluating the efficiency of this kind of education. This will be the topics um, of our discussion today with our speakers, and it's my pleasure to introduce them to you. I will go in the order, the way people are sitting um, from me. Irina Makiev, Deputy Chair of the State uh, Development Corporation, uh, VEP RF, and the CEO of the uh, f Fund of the uh, Mono Cities Development. Andrei uh, Soroka, Director of the Department of the Public Service of the Government, and Ton Fyodorov, the head of the Presidential Department uh, for the uh, Public uh, Services. Igor Baranov, the Provost of the Corporate University of Sberbank. Professor Chon, National Development Institute for Human Resources of the Ministry of the Personal Management, Republic of Korea. Andrei Betin, the Deputy Governor and Deputy Head of the Government of the Nizhny Novgorod region. And Natalia Karkusha, the PhD in Pedagogy, the Provost of the uh, Public Administration Department uh, of the RANEPA, and um, Mr. Baknin, the Deputy Director for the Department of the Public Policies in the Municipal Service, uh, Counteracting Corruption in the Ministry of Labor of the Russian Federation. According to our plan today, we have two short presentations, after which, in a very free discussion, we will be able to talk with our today's experts, and hopefully we will find some answers. It's not for all questions, at least for some of them. And um, we have very um, strong speakers. We still uh, need uh, our audience to be involved and uh, we're kindly asking you to give answer to these questions. Could you please put up the PowerPoint uh, presentation? This slide, look at this slide. Please uh, go to the slide when speak.ru. Use your mobile phones if you will, uh, your tablets or your computers, and type in the code which is uh, 9759. You will see the questions for our, our poll, our voting. And right now, you can leave your questions, which I will uh, try to ask to our speakers today. This system, we when speak.ru, enables you to vote for different questions. And those questions which will um, get the most of votes will go higher, and we will be addressing those. I'm hoping that uh, today our audience will be very participative. And for the first presentation, I would like uh, to ask Anton Fyodorov 
to share about the main uh, lines and prospects of the developing public services and civil services. And right away, I would like to kindly ask Anton, in the middle of December, in the session of the Presidential Commission uh, for Personnel, HR and Personnel, certain decisions have been made. And would you be so kind as to share these uh, decisions? Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this uh, event. It's uh, 10th, it's a jubilee forum. But one thing, uh, as I was driving here, we've had this uh, panel on human capital. And every year I can see that we have more and more people and uh, this topic is becoming more important and relevant to people for discussion, especially now. Going back to what Alexei mentioned, I can say that the personnel and HR problems are becoming mainstream. The next would be the problems related to competence, but now we are where we are. Of course, you can replace um, public officers and public servants, but this is not the best solution. And the professional Oh, thank you. And the professionalism level of the public employees is not exhausted by the skills that they have acquired just once in their lives. The professionalism of a public employee also includes some value system without which the public employee will not be able to um, provide a good service. So lately, when we speak about the public administration, we've been working on achieving a number of goals, such as uh, public service and protecting interests of the state. And this is where we would find the main topics. We, we, I'm going back to the topic of our conversation today. When we speak about the professional development and requalifications, we have to offer to our public employees such, such opportunities for the uh, ongoing development uh, getting new skills and knowledge so that they would be able to acquire these new skills and knowledge on the job. Because sometimes when people take academic leaves, they go behind in their main professional activities. Or, or if you do not improve your qualifications, your bosses and your higher-ups are uh, starting to remind about that. So we need to build a system so that people would be able to uh, do continuing education and to get new skills as they go about their professional duties. You know that the development of the public services is done within the main guidelines approved by the Russian government and the president of Russia. And uh, I am appealing to what you said, dear moderators, um, on the on a yearly basis, we're discussing these questions. Uh, that is the presidential commissions for the issues of the uh, HR, uh, HR services. We've had one session on December 14, where we have been discussing about the outcomes of the implementing the main uh, decrees um, for 2016-18, as well as proposals for developing public services in for the years 2019 through 2021. You may be aware of the story of this issue, and I'll be very brief. As for the professional developments of the public servants, we have quite big changes in the last years. On the legislative basis in 2017, a new guidelines have been introduced for the public employees for their qualification development, for their training. There is no one mandatory training once every three years, such a decision has been made, and we have an opportunity for additional or continuing education with using new financial instruments. We are mostly speaking about the uh, governmental contracts and certificates. We have the legal basis uh, for, the, uh, for the introducing new forms of the public employee's professional development. I'm speaking about the placements, seminars, and trainings, and business trips. But I'm not going to go very deep into this topic. Andrei Viktorovich is a big professional in this topic. He will share. But I'll give you numbers. According to the Russian Statistical Service, when we speak about the conventional education, a continued education for public employees, 
we have about 170,000 people um, studying every year. It's about 24% of the total number of public servants is in Russia. We're expecting that in the next years we are working on the draft of the regulations about the professional development of the public servants. And then also there is a number of regulations by the Russian government to so that we can speak about the new system of professional development of our public servants and their number and we don't have we don't pursue the goal to increase their number we are speaking about the increasing quality of education in public area so it's important to note that this set of uh, activities which we are implementing right now the the first priority is building the informational resource for the professional development of public employees and also increase their motivation for the ongoing professional development in the next three years we want to pay a special attention to the following things first of all uh, when we speak about the increasing quality of this education due to uh, engage in additional professionals from the specialized governmental universities. Ongoing evaluation of the programs which are being implemented uh, in ongoing additional education and professional retraining of public employees, making our educational services more competitive. In, in 2018, we have been speaking about that, that today we can finance this on a very small scale which, of course, does not give us a chance to speak about the increase in quality of this education. Next is implementing new forms of uh, education as well as financial provisions for training public employees. We have a huge work ahead of, ahead of us in terms of developing the digital management within the national program Digital Government. It is proposed to implement the 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 legal document turned over and to implement the digital transformations of the supervision activities and some other forms and formats and we have to train uh, yet quite a big number of people we're not only speaking about the digital literacy but we're going to go further according to the federal project new personnel for the digital economy since 2019 we're going to retrain about 270,000 people of different categories including public and civil servants two interesting things when you speak about the commission in 2014 a resolution was made to build a single a single digital profile for a public employee which would ensure the outcomes of their professional development and here we're counting on the experts from different ministries and agencies uh, it's also important to improve the practice on, on selecting uh, personnel for the public service including the database uh, from educational uh, facilities and, and when we speak about different students and uh, Postgraduate students, we are going to think about that um, and taking the opportunity, or or uh, I'm going to finish up my presentation. But I also would like to include into our agenda one additional issue. I do hope that our audience will uh, be very participative. I'm speaking about the issue. What do you think? What kind of motivation we need for public employees? so that they would grow and develop and uh, be engaged in uh, continuing education. I am open to your feedback, not necessarily today. Please call us, write us, uh, come by, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrei Viktorovich. Anton, uh, just pass the floor to you uh, to give more details, and let's engage Let's give it the floor, and then I also wanted to ask a couple of questions to Anton after your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear uh, colleagues, uh, dear panelists. I'm hoping that uh, more people will join us later as we you know, progress, so we'll have more people in this audience. When we speak about the professional development of public employees, it's a very relevant topic, and we've been involved in this subject for, for the last two years. 
quite proactively as we uh, implement uh, the resolutions by the Russian presidents where he identified the main uh, areas of development, including the issues of the improving professional development of public servants. And back in 2017, a federal law had been adopted on making amendments into the law on public service, which identified the professional development of the public employees, includes additional education, continuing education, and uh, some events. You can see it on the slides. Also, a new principles of uh, organizing continuing education have been established. Anton has mentioned about some of them. And also, we are quite um, proactive as we're finishing up the, the, the approving the presidential decree. I think, uh, I think it will see, it will be published, and the president will um, support our proposals. And we're hoping to implement uh, them in a systemic way when it comes to professional development of uh, public employees. It will be a number of legal acts. Uh, as the way to implement uh, the presidential decree. Our joint effort is um, for the professional development of the civil servants would, would be laid in a number of principles, methodologies, technologies, and procedures, and so that we could, in a timely matter, matter uh, improve the quality and the structure of professional education. Such a systemic approach will enable each and every civil servant throughout their service to upgrade and update their knowledge and get the new skills and knowledge, also develop their personal skills and professional skills to maintain their qualification level, which is a prerequisite for them to function uh, properly. And in the years 2019 and 20, in the system of professional development, we are going to implement a number of new events, as you can see them on the slide. And one of the main approach here is uh, to me measure outcomes of professional development when we speak about the attestation of civil servants and sending them to the new uh, to the new uh, jobs and positions and the outcomes of professional developments can also be uh, based for the remuneration for them for the certain categories of the public employees so uh, we can do the annual review which will become the basis for making certain decisions when when making a decision of uh, whether to send these people again for new development. And professional development of the civil servant is one of the main HR technologies of our day. Additional professional education traditionally remains one of the main forms of professional development and will be done through implementing additional uh, professional programs, qualification development, professional retraining. And one of the main formats of organizing this will be the, the applying the state professional certificate for professional development. Uh, implementing such a certificate will enable them to get additional education in the form of uh, qualification development, professional retraining uh, in a, a university, which, uh, which is a part of the registry for executing this public, public program. The information about this register will be placed in a single information platform to manage the public employees corp and then um, built in these educational facilities, educational trainings. It will be used in the single information resource for the professional development of public employees, which will be created in 2019 based on the single information platform. We are also thinking about um, building electronic um, uh, professional development certificate as well as um, providing issues of certificates in, in accordance with the uh, federal executive authorities uh, to pursue the uh, policies and the state regulations when it comes to public services. Um, the HR service of the state organ will be responsible and the choosing the additional programs and the study of these programs based on these educational certificates will be done by employees uh, continuing their professional uh, knowledge and skills uh, with the approval of those who hire them. Once of such instruments of the professional adaptation of public employees will be such mechanism as mentorship 
which is aimed at uh, uh, providing them skills and knowledge uh, for them to function professionally, getting them to know with the specifics of public service in a given um, governmental body or agency. And also organizing these events uh, will be the responsibility of the governmental agencies. And the system of professional development will have some events aimed at um, the operational upgrading knowledge and skills such as seminars and trainings, master classes, and other events as well as studying the cutting edge experience of the public administration, sharing the experience, roundtables, conferences, and other events. Separate organizational uh, moments uh, and uh, directing of uh, different servants and the accounting of their results is also entrusted to the uh, H H staff service. Also, the HR service should be responsible for uh, making uh, prob uh, probation uh, terms also in the structural department of state bodies where the servants are combining their positions and also in other entities. This can be organized in individual mode and also in groups. At the same time, uh, the priority is given to the uh, uh, servants who are uh, appointed to the positions in the career growth. Uh, the uh, probation periods should be organized uh, according to the terms of reference, in preparation of which uh, the uh, the director, the manager, the direct manager should be involved and also uh, reporting is provided about the predation period and uh, sending special feedback from uh, the uh, location where the probation period was spent to evaluate its efficiency. So implementation of um, this uh, probation periods in the public service would expand the opportunities to study uh, career experience uh, in public services in different areas, both in uh, the state body and in the intra-agency format. In the framework of implementation of the professional development programs, we provide special conditions for individual studying uh, methodological uh, improvement of skills in the relevant topics of the professional activity. Also using as already mentioned, uh, the single specialized information resource. We should note that use of these resources is also provided within the implementation of the practice of uh, uh, educational courses for servants in the remote format. In this regard, we should note that uh, with the renewal of funding, we are starting to develop this resource based on a single system and we plan in the end of 2019 to report on the results in this area. The single resource is being formed to provide public servants an opportunity of an individual career growth using a single educational system, creation of additional incentivation and motivation for additional professional development, improvement of performance of departments and carrying out special events on professional development. Using the single resource, we provide opportunities for maximum use of modern information communication technologies and all stages of uh, professional development program, improvement of the quality of additional vocational education by uh, means of uh, special educational programs recommended for the excellence uh, or already mastered by public servants. The single resource will have the public um, part without uh, limited access and the closed part which will provide the interaction with the government body through the uh, personal account. The open part, the public part, is provided for open information and uh, for uh, self-studying including the information about the educational programs, uh, refreshment programs and this uh, part of the program is partially realized in uh, the uh, digital library, the best practice library of uh, public service. The closed part of the single resource is uh, designed for individual uh, remote and distant educational program and populating it with uh, special educational materials and their corrections. So this specialized resource, single resource, will provide uh, opportunities for distant education with uh, use of uh, open educational sources and in the closed part by uh, mastering programs of additional education. In the end, I'd like to note that 
the professional development system for public servants will be a new approach, will be a new system, new uh, personnel development technology and uh, organization of centralized additional education of public servants will be uh, uh, will be conducted under support of uh, public entities using issues and additional uh, educations and other events uh, in the area of educational development. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Soroko. I would like, well, for those who just joined us, we have an opportunity first to vote for issues and questions which we provided and prepared for our participants. And also, there's an opportunity to ask your questions. For this, you should uh, go to whenspeak.ru, uh, enter the code 9759, and uh, use this portal. I'd like to ask a question to Mr. Soroko. What uh, skills are required for modern uh, public employees? Are there any changes uh, versus uh, previous times? Uh, what were your expectations in previous times? Uh, what has changed since that? And uh, what uh, new technologies do you use in education? And looking at the questions we receive uh, in uh, the online mode, the second popular question uh, sounds uh, similar. What areas uh, needed to update knowledge and skills of public servants? Let's start from this, uh, if possible, be brief. As for skills, we should proceed from uh, the main points, and uh, Anton Juric already mentioned them, uh, high quality service to the motherland. This is the basis. Uh, everything else is connected to this, related to the skills, uh, which uh, will be needed by uh, by public service. This is the basis. The main trend uh, is uh, very well outlined now, the issues of digitalization of uh, public service. So every public employee in any activity, in any area, should uh, address the issue of high quality replenishment of the knowledge gap, which is does exist and will do understand this, that the issues of digital economy are very pressing now and uh, these issues require additional knowledge, special knowledge, and this is the main skill which will be required in the nearest time. And the second point, all issues related to project-based activities, which is uh, one of the main trends now of the development of our system. And by the way, one of the examples of uh, our attitude to the challenges we have uh, now we plan to renew the federal reserve of uh, public uh, stuff which we should execute uh, within the decrees of the president and this is one of the very important topics which require um, special special uh, skills from public servants to implement and to fulfill the requirements as uh, best as possible Uh, Mr. Fedorov, you mentioned in your uh, speech uh, that uh, conditions should be provided for the on-the-job training, on-the-job learning. Could you explain a little bit what do you mean by this? Uh, should it be some online courses or should this be um, that uh, public servants should spend some part of their working time for learning? It's not exclusive things. Thank you for your question, by the way. First of all, I, uh, I'd like to refer to Andrei Viktorovich, what he uh, mentioned now, soft skills, uh, maybe it is a very popular topic, and also to the question, what skills should be developed in yourselves? Uh, the public studies, the foreign studies, although not ours, say that the success of a public service um, depend for 75% from on, on the soft skills, uh, working in team, working on a project basis, and only 15% of 25% account for hard knowledges, hard skills related to education and other things. This is to some comments uh, to your previous question. As for uh, the uh, on-the-job training or on-the-job learning, of course, uh, I uh, mentioned it uh, on a very high level, but uh, as for the specific example, um, uh, I finished my studies when I was 50, 
I uh, uh, underwent the full course of our uh, Christian Orthodox University, Sviatotikvinsky Orthodox, in, in my uh, 50th Jubilee. And at the same time, uh, 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 never for the whole my study life, uh, I've never I, I I didn't get it in a, in a, in person uh, uh, mode. So formats should be absolutely different for our public servants. That's true. And in the recent time, we are together with the government to develop the topic of the remote learning related to the resources which would allow to test your own preparedness and readiness for different tasks and jobs and uh, we will be able to understand what uh, are the gaps of the specific public servant related to different skills and they could be then replenished. Uh, these skills should be then improved uh, on the job or off the job. Well, but uh, but coming back to what we mentioned before, we have a very fast going life. If you are behind, you lag behind very strongly, you should do it uh, in parallel, in parallel, and develop yourself and uh, implement your uh, skills and use your skills on your working place. That's the, the key. Together with the Irina Vladimirovna, out uh, beyond this discussion, we uh, discussed the distant mode of education and we came to a conclusion that specifically for the on-the-spot, very fast learning, distant format is the most acceptable one from the point of view of getting quick knowledge and quick skills. It's just a small remark from my side. Then, well, maybe we can uh, give the floor to uh, Irina, to Irina Makiva, uh, about the formats, uh, which uh, formats are of demand and pressing now and most popular now. You have a very serious experience in a successful organization of mono cities studying programs and maybe not all our participants know that this program received a golden medal, international golden medal uh, and uh, well it uh, is highly appreciated by the global society, by the international uh, expert society. So, to the question of soft skills and hard skills, distant or not distant learning, what do you think? What is more important? Thank you very much, Alexei. Uh, for me, it's very easy to speak in this audience. I'm not a public servant anymore. I've been, I've worked 15 years in the public service and then I left it and now I work with pleasure in banking. But I'm not a, a teacher, not a professor, and for me it's very easy to give answers to the questions in this audience. Well, in the very beginning, I would like uh, to express my opinion. Uh, what motivation is required, is needed for a public servant uh, for continuous learning, continuous development? I'm more than sure that this should not be money or uh, career growth. It's not the right motivation which makes us work around the clock. I think it's very important that uh, we have the appreciation of the results of your job, of your work, and this appreciation comes both from your service, from your job, and uh, from the territory you live. The citizens, the population uh, appreciate it. If your municipal public entity, the municipal uh, uh, population, citizens, should uh, perceive uh, your results as their own, uh, uh, their own benefit. And I think this appreciation is much more higher, much uh, more stronger than money or, or uh, positions. I think Anton Yurich asked, uh, sorry for repeating you, motivation for learning, motivation for learning, uh, for development, yes, uh, and I received the answer to my question absolutely precisely. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think it would be also interesting to discuss how to motivate public service to go for trainings, for learning programs. Because I find situations when um, sending uh, uh, for learning for a public servant would is like a punishment. If I'm being sent by manager somewhere, it means that I do something wrong or I don't, I'm, I'm not needed. They want to send me away. There is also another uh, view, another view. Uh, the in-presentia learning is just like uh, an additional vacation. 
for public servants. I spent a lot of time in the small organization I worked in the administration of our president to eradicate repeated, uh, repeated uh, tries, uh, attempts to go for repeated learning. And sorry I interrupted you. Well, the discussion is also interesting. Now answering to the question of the distinguished moderator about hard skills and soft skills, uh, I think both are needed. And here I uh, support the opinion that the, uh, the skew for soft skills gives better result. That's true. I already stepped over my 50 years uh, jubilee and I still continue learning. I agree that learning should be continuous. When you stop on the place, you lag behind and it happens very quickly. So soft skills, flexible skills uh, is more important and the skew to this side should be there. Now about in percentage and uh, remote uh, learning. I have to con I'd like to continue the um, idea of uh, the colleague. We started to discuss very heatedly what is better. The question is what is better. If you want to get be quick results, you read something, you get b uh, quick uh, quick result, you get the maximum number of points and that's true for a quick uh, quick win for quick task. If you plan uh, for the long run, if you plan for a long run project, oh, it's absolutely needed to have to, 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 to take the person away from the comfort zone to create different, absolutely different uh, conditions. Uh, submerge it's there, only in this case the person should have uh, the need uh, for learning uh, and be away from routine and be in this learning and stress learning. So here here the person should study better, of course. So absolutely, the person should be taken away from this routine and placed in the educational skills area. One more thing I wanted to add. Based on the experience of working with MonoCities team, we need a probation period, of course. It shouldn't be a, a very high-cost trip abroad, just see the different country. No, uh, even a trip to a, another city is needed. When mono cities, mono towns um, started to learn, uh, first, horizontal links. Horizontal links is the most precious, uh, most precious result of this work. And now I don't need, for instance, uh, guys from Tatarstan bring to Murmansk region. They have uh, interactions, they have new links, and as soon as a new knowledge appears somewhere, they, without coming to another city, they can transform this knowledge. So to make friends, to make them communicate, of course, first trips and probation should be need, uh, uh, needed. Uh, asking, asking to your third question about modular approach uh, or long-term programs, I believe that the modular system, modular training system is a big plus, is a big advantage, but the intermodular period is a cement which uh, brings together all these small bricks, small components and uh, fix them together. I tried to do it very fast and uh, so I think it would be uh, good. Thank you very much. You mentioned regional specifics uh, and um, Uh, those are applauding who have uh, to do with with mono cities. You either were part of our team or were, uh, this were educating our people. Let's give the floor to Mr. Andrei Mitin. Andrei Anatolievich, uh, what is your opinion? What skills are needed? And maybe your answers very briefly to the same questions about motivation, about competences. Uh, would you please give your answer? You know what is um, amazing? I uh, wrote the, the whole list here. Although when I came here, I thought uh, I would uh, say something new. But nevertheless, if we speak about the issue, issue of motivation for public servants, of course it's appreciation. It's a very important thing. But how to feel this appreciation? How to measure it? And here we arrive at uh, different approaches uh, which is used in HR all over the world. As ca how can we see this situation from the ground? We see implementation of state HR, when HR functions can be set on the ground of the public service, starting from the digitalization up to coaching and mentorship, up to the improvement of qualification. And when we go down to municipal level, it's very important now for the public service to use breakthrough and to end technologies. When we are engaged in improving skills of an individual subject, entity or person, coming back to the 
agenda to the working place, he or she uh, is not able to realize all the skills all the time. So here I'd like to uh, support the opinion that the coming, uh, the deterring of the routine and uh, of uh, the job learning five, six modules gives a huge development impetus in terms of horizontal links. And I was also a part of these modules and uh, I would try to send our employees to these modules, to these programs, when they get in touch with other constituent entities, with other colleagues, and when they train together with federal public servants, horizontal um, ties are very strong. And to get some uh, soft skill or some result, the speed is much higher there. If we take uh, the current mega trend, the main mega trend is the tremendous uh, acceleration in this area. In the very fast changing world, we need absolutely different form of a public official, which is and who is able to adjust for the changing um, um, environment, and also the understanding to what it means serving, serving uh, to whom, to the people who uh, live together with you or work together with you in your municipality. And if you get appreciation from them, this would be the biggest appreciation and biggest confirmation of your achievement. But there is a flip side of this medal, is the appreciation of your management. In our Nizhny Novgorod, uh, we started a digital project uh, six months ago, an HR portal, full-fledged portal with all functionalities and uh, people, any, every person can be, get registered there and uh, uh, Nizhny Novgorod um, populations uh, and uh, there are 18,000 users, 2.5 thousand uh, have never been uh, dealing with the public service and this is an approach of five handshaking, you remember, when you can shake hand uh, of every person through these five handshaking. Through the HR system, we can uh, unify the uh, uh, evaluation system of a public service uh, with using the functionality of self-estimation, and the person can see the skills he or she is, is required, is needed. This is a very important part. When we are not able to get to the bottom and to see what uh, skills are lacking, and when the person's... Uh, mind uh, or, or experience is, is not big, uh, he or she doesn't know what skills are needed. And here, uh, all the approaches, in person or distant uh, learning uh, trips or probation periods are help a lot to exchange fast uh, the information in the fast and quick changing world. I would like that every uh, member, uh, every head of the municipality would come here and hear and listen what uh, colleagues are talking about. They would be surprised that what we discuss here and what they discuss there, there's a big gap. And the biggest job we try to do is to establish this link, end-to-end -end link, to make, give or take, same understanding in all the points. Coming back to soft and hard skills, of course we speak about soft skills here. And uh, learning today means... Uh, to have uh, five, six, once uh, in five, six years, get new skills, new knowledge, and uh, develop. And to give an opportunity for public servants to create platforms for them where they could uh, get the improvement of their competence uh, on a free uh, basis, just to, to be able to grow along to their career and on their working place. Thank you very much. You, initially, you mentioned that you support the modular approach to education. Let's uh, be absolutely frank and clear that uh, when different managers, different leaders give interviews or uh, hold speeches, they say we need to train people, we need to get learning, provide learning. When it comes to the real situation, almost everybody who is taking part in this staff reserve uh, in uh, the lobbies, they say, well, my manager told me again, how come you just uh, had a learning one month ago, another module, how can I let you, let you go? And uh, it's very hard to leave go the employees which are really precious for us. What about your employees? How many times are you ready to leave uh, for education one week every time? Can I support you here? I, we create a single HR service. We face the same problem if we take one executive body or municipality. What happens there? When you give uh, an application, uh, so three years uh, probation, three years development, for instance, which was abolished, what uh, the manager does, uh, he lets the 
the most people which are not too important in their life, not without key uh, tasks. And so the implementation of the digital evolution of personnel allows to understand the competences which are needed for a specific person the, and to create a personal development program. If we will be able to make the personal development program for every individual, for every block, for every entity, then we'll be able to understand what is really needed. And uh, this should be a passport, a certificate, a card, which uh, will be demonstrated to the body and uh, will say how to evaluate the current state of uh, the body. And this knowledge of competences are lacking, is hard, and soft skills were needed. And only in this case, your ministry, your body can move on. And I'm fighting with this um, uh, because I am confirming they do not won't let people go. If you, if you give them the freedom to make decisions, they are sending those people who do not need this professional uh, development. I wanted to have an argument, but eventually we agreed with one another. I also want to support you for the simple reason. For the simple reason, if our digital component will be the way we wanted to see, we will not we will not, you know, just back people who has to teach who and what. We'll simply be sending people. Everybody will know what they need to learn. And this is the goal. And I would like to change the order of our discussion a little bit. I see that Professor Cho was nodding his head. He was agreeing with what Andre has been speaking about. And since nobody wants to argue, let's support uh, support those conclusions that we've heard so far. Mr. Cho, what's the situation in the Republic of Korea? Do you have such a problem with um, with uh, motivating, not even with motivation, but with uh, uh, choosing the approach for educational programs? And what, in your opinion is more important when we speak about the teaching uh, public employees soft skills or hard skills. Thank you. Well, oh, let's say this is a um, huge question to answer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much enjoying, you know, you know debates about you know, soft and hard skills, motivation and everything. Um, when I talk about you know, Korea, it's a small country and a small amount of people so um, we decided to pour an enormous amount of effort uh, to educate people. That's the only way to survive in this harsh world. So we did. So uh, when we think about that, um, still, the public officials' characteristics, when we think about that, is slow, very sluggish, and very low motivated. I don't know why. But um, we are still going through that kind of problems all the time. So we try to evaluate that, you know, elevate that to a certain level of that. But it's not an easy task. So we have a um, pretty state-of-art online educating system. We focus on the bite-sized learning so that they can learn quickly, easily, and you know, apply that on the, on the work um, you know, very short amount of time without leaving the office. So uh, most of the um, you know, e online class uh, content size is less than 10 minutes for individual topic. It's very concise, very precise, and very effective. But still, their motivation for work is promotion and higher pay. We cannot, we cannot avoid that. But let's think about this. Uh, in Korea, uh, especially from two years ago, uh, we have a, a state-of-art online system and e-government and everything that you mentioned in your presentation like three uh, years ago. But the fact is, uh, let's say we have 100% of infrastructure already established. Lots of money, lots of efforts has been poured into that project. We are ready to run. But I would say, it's bold enough to say that, but um, uh, like 30% of the system is utilized now. And 70% of the system is still more way to go. So uh, it's a strategical question. Uh, when, when we talk about the strategic thing, we talk about the strategic HLD. That means we need to think about the span of three, five, or 10 years of development plan without shaking. Terse and very firm and solid. And we should trust them, or we should believe them, and push it to the limit. 
Uh, that's, that's, that's not an easy thing. And um, you know, the motivation itself is really important thing in Korea too. So we are focusing now on the value education system, not the technical one. Uh, technical one is competence-based education is like we have top-notch programs already. So I don't think we need to spend some time on that. But uh, when we go to the basics, when we think about the value, why do we do this as a servant? What's the meaning of the public servant like you mentioned before? That kind of education is really important in Korea because when the technology go up too high, it eventually go back to the human beings. That's why we need to think about the humans more. So we pour an enormous amount of time in teaching value system of uh, public servants right now. And that's, that's the motivation thing, but it will take time because we, we are talking about the um, transition management. We are not talking about the change management. It will take time, it will take patience, and it will take an enormous amount of time. Yes. Uh, I think that will be the answer for that, you know, questions. If, if you guys have any questions on, you know, our country situation, please ask me. That's why I'm here. Спасибо. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. I will uh, take advantage of your <laughs> proposal. And um, I want to ask you a question that our audience wants to hear probably from speakers from Russia. And uh, we will take advantage of this opportunity of how to change the, the, the heads of the governmental agencies. And what's the situation in Korea when you speak about the senior leaders and the top leaders in governmental agencies? Thank you. Um, you know, for how do you try to change the... Um, High-level uh, officials. That's impossible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much impossible thing. But um, uh, when we think of, when we, you know, um, what is that? Uh, Partialize the entire education system that we have right now in Korea, uh, like 40% of them is dedicated to the um, you know, higher level officers because they are the um, biggest stakeholders, they are the um, decision makers. Uh, they at least, you know, pour uh, tremendous amount of effect in decision making process. But if they go wrong, it's a big, big, big problem. So, well, you know, the education itself is a small part of the entire process. We engaged in the, um, you know, uh, evaluation and audit and all of those comprehensive efforts to keep those people in the right path. But that's not an easy thing because, uh, like I mentioned before, when the value system collapsed, nothing was going to work. So we need to you know, for more effort in keeping that value system in the place, working, and keep it in the healthy you know, status. Um, I think that's, that's the most critical part, not only our country, but your countries also, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. My next question is for Igor Voronov, the provost of the Sberbank's corporate university. Your um, university, is no longer just uh, your corporate uh, educational structure, but you are also providing your educational services to uh, different categories of listeners, including including many programs uh, for the public service development. What is your experience? Do you have any changes in terms of online and offline components, I mean, correlation between online and offline? And the questions which we've been asking everybody about the soft skills and hard skills. Uh, what is your situation about these mm, soft and hard skills in your corporate university? Building up on what our colleagues has just said, I will begin with the biggest challenge which we had in our bank, in Sberbank, and we still have it. It's building a culture of the self-learning organization. When on one hand, it's the value in itself that we give each employee, each, each, uh, each uh, you know, employee to work and to develop. Not even, not even asking the permission from their higher-ups. At the same time, there is a different part of, to this motivation. It's learning as the necessary part of solving your professional challenges. When the challenges you're facing and your team is facing are becoming so complex in terms of hard and soft skills, 
that unless you will retrain yourself in your in your team, you will not be able to solve these questions and challenges. I think these are the two sides of the coin related to motivation. And I believe that we are implementing programs for the regional teams, mostly for regional teams in our corporate university. And plus, we have um, a number of um, heads from the Russian regions. They're learning in our programs. Usually, these are modular type of programs, quite lengthy programs. And I think they usually come to us because there is a, this uh, combination which it took years to get this combination between the soft skills, uh, professional skills, and we also identified the digital skills. You need all three to solve these challenges today. It's not for different types of tasks and challenges, but for the same ones. From our experience, from the very bitter experience, bad experience in our bank in, in trying to digitize our services and developing the services, We've understood uh, it was a hard way, and we've learned it hard way, and we're sharing it openly in our programs, why simply it's not enough to learn digital skills unless you change your format of work. If you need to develop a digital service, uh, you have to do it totally differently. If you had a certain function related to your dealings with the client, uh, there was a description of this function. Somebody else was sitting in the back office, an IT guy, very smart IT guy, was implemented that. It does not fly. It does not work neither in our bank nor at the market in general or in public um, services. We're speaking about mixed teams. We're speaking about very close collaboration to build it. And out of this very close collaboration, we need to get a balance between the digital, professional, and soft skills that you have to acquire. Going back to formats that you've asked me about, you know that um, it takes a certain combination of three different formats, as experience tells us. The first experience is an e-course or electronic course, 24-7 online course, which is always available. Usually it's a micro teaching, like short uh, snippets, uh, sound bites, and it's a component when you need to build certain awareness, like people understand what we're talking about. There is another format, more complex online format. It's um, what they call live virtual, different webinars, uh, different formats. When you involve, engage your audience, they work in mixed groups, not only with um, instructor, instructor, um, using like Moonspeak, so that we're using. Uh, in, it's an engagement between. Uh, a teacher and an audience and between themselves. It's working in inter-regional teams, which is very commonplace in our bank. It's basically a totally different uh, type of education than simple online course that you can get in any moment of time. It all should be combined with a component of the on-campus, face-to-face education. And the software will not work without its face-to-face on-campus learning. And you cannot build a culture without the face-to-face -face training. Another question I would like to ask you, if I may. In terms of who should teach and what is your approach? Because oftentimes we have arguments. Some people say that you have to have professional trainers and instructors because not only they have the respective knowledge, they know how to carry this knowledge to their classes and other people say no we need only practitioners people who have rich experience they have dealt with these problems so they can teach us how to solve these problems how do you find this right balance in terms of right instructors i believe that the world is not such a dualistic it's uh, it has the 50 shades of gray so to speak if you take an academic uh teacher like a college teacher i can say from my experience when we were getting ready for this session, both of us graduated from Columbia University. So first you study in business school, and then I crossed the road, so to speak, to the public affairs. It's a totally different world. So while in business school, they are teachers who are dealing, you know, sorting out cases, and they're very proactive discussions, and no lectures whatsoever. Simply by crossing the road, you go to these other academic trainers, you're in lectures, all of a sudden you're at seminars, you know, the way we, we used to it. The same is true for practitioners. Um, they are different people. Practitioners, they are different people. If you speak about the skills, you need to train people for that. We have the system leaders teach leaders. We have a special programs of the skills 
uh, you know, learning the skills. When one leader is learning from another leader, it's a value. It's a part of self uh, appraisal for these leaders that they can learn how to work with this audience of the peer to peer training. It's a very important element uh, witnessing to their professional maturity, if you will. So. Um, I do not believe in any radical solutions like either or black and white. It should be a combination, but at the same time, it should be very good and professional training uh, uh, and, and, and development for trainers, for the instructors. Thank you. We need a combination. And actually, I wanted to ask me, uh, Mr. Cho to, to say what is your correlation between correlation between the on-campus teachers who are employers, you know, working full-time, and invited teachers or invited experts who may be teaching certain modules, who may be working, or those who have a practical experience in public service. Thank you. The reason why I raise my hand is just at one point. Um, in Korea, traditionally, the teacher is from the um, national university or retired government officials. Old people came to the class talking about old stories. And, you know, all those things have a good you know, advantages, I admit it. But um, uh, these days, uh, those uh, teachers from the um, governmental side is getting lower and lower. Their ratio is really going down. Because uh, we need to realize, uh, you know, we're starting to realize that the, um, the world is really, you know, like you said, different, you know, 50 shade of what? Yeah, those things. I mean, um, words are really colorful. And, um, you know, the public sector should be not leading this, just follow this in right speed, in right ratio. But we are not that good at that. So, you know, in Korea, we are open the teaching market to the outside world, whether that's the private university or whether that's the, um, you know, consulting company. If that, if that teacher has a, you know, right credential, we invite them and let them have an opportunity to teach the public officials. Um, reaction is good. And actually, the, uh, when, I, when I need to you know, add one point, uh, the position itself, the governmental you know, position, actually entry point, traditional entry point to the um, you know, Korean um, you know, public officials is the um, national test. They need to go through the um, higher competitive test to be a public you know, officials. But we open the market to the outside world. So, you know, we want to have a different breed. We want to have a different effect. We, have, we want to have a variety of lots of different, you know, specialties into the public sector. I mean, uh, I think it's the um, uh, proper way to do that. And, um, you know, the ratio itself, well, you know, it doesn't, you know, give you that much impact because they are all different, like him said. Okay. I wanted to ask the same question to Natalia in terms of who should be teaching. You know, you have very big experience and you are a professional, you're a professional in pedagogics and teaching. What do you think about our current situation? Alexei, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to share. When you speak about the pedagogics and teachings, questions are all important. Who to teach, what to teach, how to teach, and who should be teaching. Basically, it's all we've been speaking about right now. So saying of who should be teaching, in my opinion, the efficiency of training and education will be higher if we have the uh, experts with practical experience and of course um, it's all about content but we sp when we speak about the hard skills it's probably some knowledge which can be given by a university professor by a college professor the person who is really knowledgeable about this subject if we're speaking about some applied things about some practices best practices of applying certain technologies at a particular workplace or working situation then i think uh, practitioners should be sharing their best case i think it's about a balanced approach and the balanced approach will be token of success Speaking about who we are teaching, it's a very painful question because all of my career working at the public sector and now I'm involved in organizing educational processes, I am running into this question that people come to us. 
people are unmotivated. They do not want to learn. Not all of them, but quite a big uh, portion. Some people have been sent. Some people do not understand what am I doing here. Because they've been told, you have to go to this program. You have to spend several days. People do not want to learn. They do not find these topics interesting. And like our colleagues have mentioned already, we have... We do not have individual development trajectories for the public services. We are putting them in a, like a, in a single box, not based on their personal needs and development, but based, you know, to simply implement a program. We need 25 people. We want these 25 people sit in this audience, and we want the certain agency send 25 people. Is that the way it is? In the most cases, yes. It's like a cookie cutter. It's a single one size fits all approach but we need to build individual educational trajectory to build this individual educational trajectory we need to evaluate their qualification to evaluate their qualification we need to have a model of competence with the full descriptions with the with the behavioral indicators like what this person should be should have how should they express themselves at their workplace only then we will know what to teach them and how to teach them and how to promote these people in their careers Speaking about the formats of training, like I said, the best is online education with professionals, with experts, with practitioners. But one nuance, one thing, experience and practice in, of the Skolkovo school in Ranapa school, it's better to teach in teams. When we have the, the group of leaders, the, the group of senior leaders, um, in my project, project school, it looks very, very sharp because here we have the leaders, they studied, they came back, and then what? And then there is a breaking of this information. They came back to their teams and they cannot explain to their teams what they want from their employees and how to build this work in this project. Therefore, my deep conviction is that we need to teach the whole teams, not one person, not two people, not even five people, but take the whole working team and fully immerse them and integrate. Only then we have the full, you know, knowledge. They'll be on the same page and we'll have the development of this whole team in terms of their hard skills. Now, about motivation. Motivation for professional development. You know, the Swedish scientists have made study about the level of motivation of different professional groups. And they found out that the, the biggest level of m motivation for professional development with athletes of elite athletes. Why do you think this is the case? Because they're always in the in competition. They competing uh, every time, all the time, and uh, the motivation of person is built on that. When you are asked for, when you're being evaluated, so this is your stimulus, your incentive for your further development. On my opinion, now. Very, we have very good cases in professional competitions, competitions of leaders of Russia competition. It's a very good example. The feedback we get from the participants tells us that this contest uh, uh, promoted a very intensive personal development, uh, not uh, only in some studies and exercises, but in total. I uh, read, I studied a lot, I uh, read a lot of new literature that was stimulating people. It means that these competitions and constants, it's an artificial but very serious lever to stimulate, to incentivize best performance for uh, further development. We are opening right from today a big old Russian competition. We are opening it, which is called Project Manager, which is built especially on the evaluation of competencies in the project-based governance and uh, work. And I hope it will contribute to professional growth of public officials also in the area of project-based activities, taking into account our tasks in the area of national projects. Thank you very much, Natalia. I wanted to ask you maybe the most complicated question. I've been asking it for to, to many uh, managers in the recent years in different universities, also Western universities, how to evaluate efficiency of different programs. And um, some people are got lost and sometimes I don't uh, get a direct answer. Maybe you have a good answer to this question. I didn't want to um, uh, speak a lot about the evaluation of even qualification of public service, but still I have to come to this question. Why? Because I've been tortured for recent years uh, by a dilemma. Our 
uh, in law 237 for the relocation is uh, applicable to everyone except for public officials. And when everybody is getting ready for this qualification um, uh, exam, the efficiency evaluation is uh, on the surface. It's being certified and uh, demonstrated during the evaluation of criteria. We do not have it. Maybe the question is uh, that this law, 238, should be extended also for public servants, and then we would uh, solve the problem of efficiency of our educational program. That was just my opinion. And the second thing about programs, we have some... Uh, uh, confusion there. In, there are a lot of overlaps. Topics are overlapping. Maybe we should have less topics, but they should be thoroughly worked through and developed and designed. And uh, when the person comes to this program, should the person should undergo the evaluation of basic competencies and then he or she should get the final evaluation as a result of this program. But still, this is the level of knowledge and uh, effects uh, and the results should be evaluated after the person returned to the working place and after he or she realized the knowledge and what would be the results for the beneficiaries, for the people we are working on our public service. Thank you. I would like to address this question to Leonid Evgenievich, who joined us. So, uh, Mr. Vachnitze, the Deputy Director of uh, the Municipal Service uh, Educational and Policy. Please, could you pass the microphone to Mr. Evgenievich? Your ministry is a customer of many programs. So what do you think? Is it possible to evaluate performance and efficiency of these programs? If yes, then how? It's a big pleasure to uh, listen to these new words and uh, new phrases in the area of uh, public service. We should uh, have a more prospective look, uh, other than just uh, the timeline of programs and the amount of people underwent special programs. And we should make a focus on the competencies uh, which uh, is given to the participants. Ministry of Labor last year organized the education of more than 15,000 public officials on 48 additional education programs. And we can perfectly see that people have a demand for more. They want more. They want to get more knowledge, uh, especially for hand-on practice and depend on use. And so I would split this issue of competency into two levels. First is, of course, hard skills. And with hard skills, we should set the record straight. We should uh, have a broader look at the uh, uh, educational service, educational programs for public service. And we should match this additional education service with the uh, main uh, higher education uh, programs and curriculums because uh, the real professional should understand very well uh, its area uh, much better than the average and uh, in this case the split by areas of the whole HR work for the public service is required and it requires the matching with the main educational curriculums it's not the question of three or five years it's the question of a longer run uh, the people we would train these people will come to replace us and so we should start from GMEU program these program is uh, implemented almost in every educational institution and they have different profiles in me it uh, in in technical universities one program in uh, in med medical service others and so we have to train also officials in these uh, institutions that's about hard i absolutely support now the opinion that uh, the main part in the official is the strive for self-development. And here we have also not a, 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 a piece of a, a kind of a bigger situation. Uh, public service can last uh, for more than 40 years, and for this time the whole technological structure and legislation can change, and many things can change too. And in this regard, self-development is absolutely required, but also the person would change. He would rethink his experience, he will uh, have more demand for more knowledge, and he will have a different lifestyle and, uh, and a different perspective. We should get this, and we should uh, capture this also in all educational programs. And for those who are growing in the positions, they should move from hard skills to soft skills, of course. And the most important thing is, of course, uh, state-wise uh, thinking. A high-profile official should have this knowledge for sure. 
So we are trying, we're doing our best to organize next year new courses of education which are called Efficient Leader and we should split them uh, for three base categories. The beginners, those who had some experience of three or five years and for higher groups. And uh, we will try to include all these approaches there. I hope that we will succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have... Uh, time to sum up and to wrap up but uh, we started a little bit later so we asked for to extend a little bit our session we asked all the participants to answer three main questions let's take a look at the results if it's possible to bring them up on the screen first question related to the skills and what skills are lacking at by um, Public servants Anton Yurevich showed us that 85% is soft skills and 15% uh, account for high skills. And what is lacking, what our public servants lacking on the opinion of the audience? Please, could you show us the results? If it's not possible to show, or... Well, meanwhile, oh, okay, very good, we have it. So, uh, according to our audience, 63% belongs to soft and 37 goes to hard skills and uh, the evaluation of the uh, educational program could you please raise hands those who underwent any um, educational programs for public officials very good thank you very much so we have an average evaluation without without uh, the signature but the question sounded the following as follows according to the voting not not so bad five very efficient four just efficient three good programs but uh, something is lacking two not efficient and one absolutely not in line with the requirements to public officials good programs but uh, many things are lacking so we have uh, uh, the space for improvement here i think and our third question we provided to the audience how many time how much time the public servant can spend on educational programs a year with the uh, with leaving the working place 36 percent 55 percent one to two weeks less than one week eight percent thank you very much to those who voted and uh, let us as we prepare I promised let us uh, answer to questions which we received in the online uh, mode you can all see them you can see the likes and the number of votes we've already handled a part of them anyway uh, well uh, one question on uh, the third place which we've got here how speakers see the opportunities to change the values of public officials. 3.5 thousand specialist survey show that less than 10% believe that they serve to, this, to the uh, society, while others have different tangible and material uh, values only. It's an old story about those who build a, a church and others just bring uh, the stones some of the speakers please are you ready to comment on this how sh what should we do to to um, change values during educational programs can i say a few words please the topic is basically quite important the most important one and unfortunately i have to disappoint those who ask this question we cannot teach people what we're speaking about we can bring up we can only uh, well uh, foster this skill of course it's possible to acquire it with life using different programs but still I think it should be just uh, an addition and not the basic thing we should proceed from the fact that the public service is a service first and foremost and everything else comes later we are discussing a lot now about different professionals officials 
and uh, these issues are quite similar there. I'm not sure that only 10% uh, officials understand what they're doing on their public service, but I don't have the precise statistics. I can't, well, uh, anyway, uh, cite it because I'm not sure of this figure. But anyway, I think as a public servant is a special ser a person which who should be screened out first based on their uh, individual characteristics and then uh, can be trained uh, using different educational programs. Thank you very much. And the question which received the most votes, how to change and uh, educate the uh, managers of the state bodies. I asked this question to Mr. Cho, and now maybe someone of uh, Russian colleagues are, is ready to answer, please. I would say, take into account the experience of uh, training uh, high-profile officials, I must say, it's very hard. What, who should teach for regional level? Whatever good experts and uh, teachers and professors in regional educational institutions we have, uh, there is no profit in uh, the motherland. Uh, managers want to see experts of high skill, of high level, and uh, most probably from Moscow, and uh, this is a bi there's a big demand for that. That's uh, regular, that's uh, justified. There are cases of uh, these practitioners and they have uh, many things to share. As for the federal bodies, it's very hard to train uh, managers of federal institutions. In this case, the person should be a very serious subject matter expert in the area to be able to share its, his experience and to be able to train high, high skilled and high profile officials. As for international speakers, I must say that uh, it's not always necessary to chase for international participation of different speakers in the educational programs because uh, um, global cases and global experience is good, but it's not always applicable. And very often the cases we receive from international speakers, they, uh, in, well, couldn't um, fit in and couldn't be applied in our Russian specifics. Well, as an experience, yes, as uh, keynote speakers, uh, maybe not for the main educational program. Andre, you wanted to say a few words. A small addition from my side. As I understood here, the context, how to change. Well, that was the question. To change, you mean replace or train? Or develop as I understood this uh, um, well this question sounds like we have unfortunately uh, managers leaders who are not ready to change they're quite conservative and uh, in all approaches in all the areas of their activity and the only mechanism can, which can be used for their training there are a lot of programs by the way we can screen many these are uh, the target wise approach if uh, the uh, body the institution set some tasks and it was uh, from the part of Sperbank if the team is lacking skills uh, combine uh, educational process with the target uh, achievement uh, this would be the hardest the uh, strongest motivation but every target should be measurable that's the key if you're able to uh, measure input and output then you can motivate any manager any leader to mo to change to develop thank you very much i'd uh, like to take uh, uh, the responsibility take to take the right to ch to to join the discussion uh, i think it's not possible to train regional teams when the first uh, phase, the first position, uh, or the first, the highest leader is not learning, is not willing to take new knowledge, it wouldn't be so uh, as efficient as it could be. And in the recent time, the trend is quite evident that all, both governors undergo trainings and ministers uh, join this process and many of you maybe saw that just recently we uh, there was a meeting of the state soviet state council in a very different format this format uh, included not only the open discussion of very hard questions and issues in the agenda but also a, a small uh, educational part our president went for this experiment if you may 
and I hope this experiment will continue. We will have uh, more and more high-ranked professionals and uh, leaders uh, get involved in the training and our teams will get stronger and we'll be able to solve issues uh, which I mentioned in the very beginning. I'd like to express my gratitude to all the speakers for your participation, for your speeches. I'd like to thank the audience for your participation in our today's discussion. Gaidar Forum is going on, and uh, see you on uh, other uh, platforms. Thank you. Bye-bye. Dear colleagues, in continuation of this session, we have two master classes. One on uh, the communication skills of public servants and second one uh, team leading and teamwork all information you can get f from the handouts uh.